Hi, I'm Steve. You're watching Gear Stuff and Things, and today on the channel, I'm going to give you my top three tricks to make your guitars pop in the mix. So stick around. All right, so let's jump into the computer and take a look at the examples I have here. So basically everything is set up with stereo guitar tracks, bass and drums, and then I'm going to show you the things I add to bring things to the surface and make things pop. So let's hear the first example and then we will jump into exactly what I'm doing to uh, bring some added life to the little section. So here we go. That's the basic section to stereo tracks and our two sets of tracks in stereo and then our drums and our bass. So for this first example, what I'm going to do is take a track, the same thing, basically playing it again, and then I'm gonna run it up the center, but I'm also going to make that track much more dirty and aggressive and just slowly bring it into the mix. So let's hear what that is on its own and then I will apply it to the mix. So as you can hear, it's a much more grindy, dirty version of that same section. And I have a bit of bit compression or bit crusher going on on top of it. And it's about 50% there. Uh, no down sampling. I don't want it to sound like it's bit crushed. I just want the dirt of the bit crusher on top of it. So uh, let's drop that out and we will unmute it and start bringing it back into the uh, other track so you can hear what it does. kind of just starts to give things a little bit more life. Doesn't necessarily sound like it's in the center, but it is in the center. Uh, so let's hear it without again and then with it again. trick number one to make a guitar part pop out a bit more in the mix and that's just doing a single track up the center make it a little more aggressive and uh, we'll move on to the second section here and I will show you what I'm doing to uh, bring some life to yet another part so you can use any of these and any sort of combination of them but these are just uh, the first three things I tend to do if I'm trying to get a part to stick out better in the mix so uh, this next one here is the section without any of the tweaking done to it or any of the magic and uh, then we'll hear it with. So that's more of a chord oriented part. And for that sort of stuff, I tend to rely on a different style of EQ thing to bring stuff to the surface. So what we have here, I'm gonna apply this to both the left and right. Here is a bus setup. So I've created a bus with a Pultec EQ in it or a passive EQ. So if you're someone who doesn't have the Waves Pultec, there's free versions of it out there. Uh, one that comes free with Logic. There's one that comes with a lot of stuff. So any sort of EQ will do this, but you need to find something that's more of a passive EQ style thing. So the Pultec is my go-to for this. And this is the 
uh, I guess it's the Andy Sneap trick, but uh, a lot of producers and engineers use this trick and have since basically the invention of this device. Uh, when it was used for even broadcast stuff, people started messing with the low end on it. So what we're doing here is uh, boosting at six and no attenuation. Uh, I left this in the default position, which is 20. And then we are boosting at six in the low end, as well as attenuating at six in the low end. So it's taking a boost and then cutting it. It's weird, doesn't seem like it would do anything, but you'll hear what it does. The low frequency, I've kept it, kept it 30, zero in the bandwidth. High frequency, I've set it 16. So it's kind of doing a little bit of boosting there, but it's not massive. These uh, main enhancements are turned off. As you can see, I'm not adding any volume necessarily. It's just in the center. So let's apply this to both of the tracks here and uh, we will hear what that does. subtle it sounds like a bit of a volume boost and there is a little bit of one uh, and you can adjust for that obviously in your mix but it's adding more character to the high end adding a little bit more character to the mid-range there's just a weird thing that happens with the pull tech that doesn't seem like it makes sense but it definitely brings some life to uh, stuff if you're running it in the bus and you can add as much of this or as little of it as you want right now i have it kind of just at zero but you can kind of tinker it to your own mix, but it's a good way to get more chord oriented things to pop up in your mix uh, or stuff that's more riff heavy. If you feel like it needs to be a little bit bigger without necessarily being louder, this is a good way to do that. So we will move on now to the third example of ways that you can bring some things to the surface in your mix. So for this section, I'm dealing with something that's a little more single note oriented. And in order to bring those things a little bit more to the surface and have them uh, compete a little less with the bass guitar, I am uh, going to add in some uh, weird uh, mid stuff. But first, let's hear it without, and then I'll explain to you what I'm doing. simple part but the idea is to make that part stand out a bit more and separate from the bass because the bass is doing quite a bit so let's hear that so in order to make parts like this stick out a bit more what I tend to do is record them again or you could even just copy and paste them but for making it feel a little bit more lively I just play them again in stereo and I simplify things so if there's some residual stuff like a chord almost or like in this instance there's a bit of a drone thing happening on the first note I've simplified that and removed the drone portion and just played the single notes and I have added a wah to it so uh, in this instance, I am using a wah that is inside of Logic in the pedal board section, and I basically have just adjusted it to where it sounds good with this particular tone. All right, so I'll unmute these and then we'll bring them back in so you can hear what exactly is happening there. for what's happening there. Then you 
you can hear the difference. It's not a massive change, it's a subtle adjustment, but it makes that part pop out more and separates it more from the bass guitar. Um, you can kind of achieve this with EQ if you want to go in and boost some mid stuff. <clears throat> I have found that the curve of a wah tends to treat it a little better and uh, kind of gives you the ability to kind of literally kind of tilt it into the frequency you want. And you could do this with an actual wah pedal, just putting one in front of your thing and re recording the uh, section again. Uh, or you could use some sort of uh, virtual wah pedal thing. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to bring single note parts to the surface and uh, create a little bit more life, especially if it's something you're trying to highlight or it's just a single note riff that needs some focus. Uh, that is a good way to do it. So you can use kind of any of these in any sort of order. You could also take that center track and apply this mid-range focus thing with the wand to it and it would bring a lot more life to that part as well. Uh, or if you're wanting to double a section that's maybe a lead or some sort of single note line like that that just needs a little more emphasis in the mix, that's a quick way to do it as well. So take it as you will and uh, maybe these three tricks will help you bring some more life and character to your mixes. All right, so that about does it for today. Hopefully these tricks help you bring some new life to your mixes, particularly put some pop in your guitar mixes, not like Britney Spears pop. Is that a dated reference? Who knows? Anyhow, well, it's clearly a dated reference. She's not a pop star anymore. She's just a crazy person on Instagram. Either way, hopefully these tricks help you with your mix. Is that Dr. Susie enough for you? And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and consider becoming a subscriber. Hit the little button down there. Hit that bell notification. YouTube's going to let you know every time a new video goes up. If you would like to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. I'd also like to know your tips and your secret tricks to make your mixes sound better. So if that's something you'd like to share, please let me know. Uh, I'm very curious. What do you do with your mixes to make them sound better? What is your trick? Maybe it's your thing and you don't want to share it, but you can tell me that too. You can also tell me whether these tricks work for you, if this is something that you've implemented yourself. Either way, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, it's been me, it's been you, always you. This is Gear Stuff and Things. That is the back of my head. This is the front of my head.